Can you beat Resident Evil Village using only pipe bombs and mines? Resident Evil Village is one of my favourite games of all time, and today I wanted to spice it up with a new playthrough. With the power of New Game Plus, I managed to stockpile over 200 pipe bombs and mines combined until my inventory was full of them. The idea I had was to see if it was possible to beat the game with only these two items. That meant no guns of any kind, including the grenade launcher. No knives or close range weapons either. I can't use anything other than these explosive items at any point in the game. I'll also be playing on hardcore difficulty as opposed to Village of Shadows. Anyway, enough explaining. It's time to get this challenge started. Catch. What? How did that guy get hit by it? I'm pressing X. So, as it turns out, my game actually soft locked here. Now, usually when you pick up an item for the first time in Resident Evil Village, it shows you what the item is up close. However, in this instance, it seems that the game had other plans, and I got completely stuck on this screen for some reason. I couldn't close this menu, I couldn't pause, nothing. This glitch made it impossible to progress, and I was left with no other choice but to close the game and restart from the beginning. And so, I quickly restarted the game and loaded up the most recent autosave, which actually put me back here just before the time survival sequence. To get past this first section of the game, you must survive the Lycan attack for about 5 minutes. You technically don't have to fight any of them, but clearing them out definitely makes it easier to survive. So, that's exactly what I did. Using the power of explosives, I was able to clear the game's introduction. And by the time it was over, I was 15 pipe bombs and 19 mines lighter. Not too bad for a start. After doing a little more tutorial stuff and blowing up a few extra baddies along the way, well, well. it was time to tackle the first major area of the game. Demitresk... Demi... Dimitr... Uh, I fucking hate pronouncing her name. I thought I could sneak past. That did so much damage. Fine, we'll be that way. Are we done here? No, we're not done here. Not even half an hour into the game and I've already encountered my first roadblock. In this room, you have to solve a light puzzle to progress further into the castle. The goal here is usually to shoot all five bells seen from within this room. However, this challenge means that I cannot use guns for anything whatsoever, not even for puzzles. Luckily, all the bells were able to be rung using pipe bombs. This bell on top of the chandelier was a pain in the ass to trigger with pipe bombs, but it was still possible to hit with enough trial and error. And I mean a lot of trial and error. However, there was still one bell remaining, this one visible from the window, far away in the distance. Sadly, it's outright impossible to trigger it with a pipe bomb. It's far too great a distance from the room, and the pipe bombs cannot be thrown that far, which means the only way to hit it was with a gun. So yes, the challenge is already technically a failure. You need a single bullet to progress past this room, which means that the game is not in fact possible to beat with only explosive items. Although, it would be a really boring video if I just gave up here. So instead, my new goal was to see how few bullets were required to beat the game while still only using pipe bombs and mines. And so, the run continues. Ah! 
After successfully clearing out the remaining mini bosses and collecting the required items to progress, it was time to take Looks on the like first major boss fight of the game. Hey, not bad. Luckily, the fight wasn't too bad at all and I was able to defeat Dumitresk with little trouble. By the time I had completed the castle, I was sitting at 60 pipe bombs and 67 mines, which was honestly a little concerning. Not even a third of the way through the game, and I had already used up half of my pipe bomb supply, though I tried to remain optimistic and pressed onwards. The next step of the game was to venture through the village in order to find a necessary key locked away in one of the houses. There were a few enemies to blow up along the way, as per usual, as well as this big guy who took way too many pipe bombs and mines to kill. After grabbing the key, it was time to head into the next major section of the game, House Beneviento. And what's funny about this part is that all your items and weapons get taken away. This whole house is pretty much just a giant escape room with no enemies to fight whatsoever, so the challenge really doesn't affect this section at all. Once I had completed the house just as normal, I had to make my way back to the village yet again. Along the way, there were some standard enemies that I had to get past. And something I noticed while editing this video is that I was using way too many resources on optional enemies. I mentioned earlier that enemies can drop items called metal straps, which are required to craft additional pipe bombs and mines. However, this item isn't guaranteed to drop. So while I thought I'd be able to break even when killing standard enemies, realistically, I was constantly looking at a net loss of explosives each time I used up my bombs. Next on the to-do list was to tackle the big fish guy in the reservoir. As we head into this next area, I'm standing at a total of 61 pipe bombs and 39 mines. My supply was rapidly dwindling, and it was only going to get more scarce in this coming section, as Moreau is usually a massive bullet sponge, meaning he'd likely take a lot of explosives to kill. Thankfully, this section of the game doesn't have too many enemies to deal with. Other than this wolf, which I chose to ignore, as well as this one room with about 10 guys in it, the reservoir is pretty barren in terms of enemies. However, it has an even worse obstacle for me to face. Oh my god, there's so much I have to use pipe bombs for. Oh. The reservoir contains the most amount of breakable objects that are necessary to progress in the whole game. This includes these walls of goop, these support beams, and a standard lock. Usually, you would just shoot these things and be done with it. But of course, this challenge doesn't allow for that, now does it? Which meant that every one of these obstacles required at least one pipe bomb to be cleared. Supposing I didn't fuck up any throws, that is. Otherwise, I'd have to use even more. Okay, well... That's not helping. Using up many more explosives, I was able to clear the reservoir with relative ease. All that was left to do here was to defeat Moreau, the major boss of the area. Flopping. Oh, he's flopping. Hell yeah. Alright. That wasn't too bad, actually. Moreau actually ended up being not as bad as I thought, and it honestly didn't take as many pipe bombs to kill him as I thought it would. Despite that, when all was said and done... How many do we have left? 31. <sighs> yeah. Things weren't looking great for me. With only a little over 60 explosives remaining, the challenge was starting to look bleak. I still had two main areas to get through, as well as four major bosses left to conquer. The next section in particular was a pretty cruel one. The stronghold acts as the den of the standard enemy in the game. It's essentially a massive gauntlet where the game throws 50 plus enemies at you, which I was certainly not equipped for. I tried my best to be more conservative in this area. I avoided enemies where possible, only using my items if I felt it was absolutely necessary. But with a section this jam-packed with enemies, it was a tough feat to pull off, and I still found myself using a fair few explosives to clear a path. Then, it was time to face the first of many remaining boss fights. Really? Come on, hit the mine. Hit the mine. Come on. You didn't even care about that one. Please. Let this be the last one. Please, please, please. This one? Come on. Is he dead? He's not dead. Oh my god, please. Oh, where are my mines? I have five low. Dude, come on. Just die. Please. Please. 
What the fuck is he made of? That sucked. That sucked so much. That used so many of my resources. This fight was rough. Really rough. Big Hammer Guy took a surprisingly long time to die. By the end of it, I was left with a mere 35 pipe bombs and 3 mines. To be completely honest, by this point in the run, I was feeling pretty hopeless about my chances of even beating it. I was fairly confident that this wouldn't be enough resources to get through the remainder of the game, but I decided to push forward regardless. I'd finally made it to the final core section of the game, Heisenberg's Factory. At this point, with how few pipe bombs and mines I had left, I was desperately ignoring every enemy that I came across. Despite that, this area had a lot of doors that required a pipe bomb to access, and the tight corridors made it nearly impossible to just ignore some enemies. Running on sheer determination, I swiftly made it through all the challenges this factory threw my way. That is, until this room. Wait a minute. Oh no, I forgot about this room. Allow me to present the single greatest obstacle of this entire run. This fucking room. To progress, you're required to deactivate these four energy sources so that the fan at the top will stop spinning, allowing the player to proceed past it. Usually, you just shoot these things and be on your way. Of course, we can't do that. So instead, I would need to throw pipe bombs at just the right angles to hit all of these points in midair. Oh, and I have to do all of this while two very strong enemies are constantly on my ass. These first two power sources were pretty easy to blow up, thankfully. Now, you'll notice that one of these sources is much higher than the other three, and it's this one in the center here. I pretty much ruled this off as impossible to hit with a pipe bomb, as I couldn't find a spot high enough to even reach it. So, I plan to use another bullet in this scenario, just for this one. Now, as for this fourth power source, it sits adjacent to the first two, and it looks relatively easy to hit, right? Wrong. This one fucking red light was the biggest piece of shit of this whole run. It was deceptively hard to hit. And believe me, I tried for almost 45 fucking minutes. I kept retrying this one room over and over and over again. Until eventually, this happened. Please, one of you hit. Wait, it, it got hit. At first, I thought I hit it purely out of luck in this attempt. However, I eventually began to realize just what had happened there. You see, in Resident Evil Village, explosions have a chain reaction. For example, if you place two mines down next to each other, even if only one gets triggered, the explosion from that mine will cause the other mine to also explode, making for a much larger radius covered by said explosion. The same logic applies with pipe bombs, and it's for this reason that I was able to hit it in this attempt. Mm -hmm. <gasps> it, was, it was just okay. Right, go. Wait, I hit... I, wait, I hit the one in the center. With a pipe bomb? When? Something crazy happened. As it turns out, the explosion from these two pipe bombs was not only large enough to trigger this power source, but also the one in the center as well, which I initially thought would be impossible to hit without a gun. And so, after nearly an hour of attempts with just this one room, I was able to clear it using only pipe bombs. Finally, I was almost done with the factory. All that was left were two bosses standing in my way. The first boss is this big fan guy, who was honestly not too difficult to defeat. Okay, well, I did die to him once, but that's because of my own stupidity. Otherwise, this guy was easy picking. And then, there was the Heisenberg fight. Now, with Heisenberg, the first half of this fight takes place with you on a tank that has infinite ammo. You're required to shoot his weak points in this phase, and you don't have access to your pipe bombs, so obviously this doesn't count towards the challenge. His second phase, however, is a traditional fight, so it's back to the pipe bombs with this. And honestly, this fight is a complete joke. He moves insanely slow, and it only takes about 10 bombs to kill him. Sadly, despite how successful I was in defeating these two bosses, it left me with a mere 11 pipe bombs and 2 mines. It was at this point that I knew the run was officially dead. It's just not possible to defeat the final boss with this amount of explosives. I had made it 90% of the way through the game. The finish line was right in my sights. And yet, I fumbled it. I was too careless with my resource management throughout the entire run. And as a result, I lost. Right at the end. It was a good run, but ultimately, 
this challenge ended in failure. But that wouldn't be a satisfying way to end this video, now would it? After a long and arduous replay of the entire game, I finally made it back to the final stretch. This time with a whopping 42 pipe bombs and 26 mines left to use against the final boss. I was able to accomplish this by avoiding almost all standard enemies throughout the run, as to conserve my explosives for boss battles and necessary breakable objects only. Now I could finally pick up where I last left off. Before we get to the final boss though, there's this short segment where you play as Chris Redfield. He has his own set of items to use, including a pistol and an assault rifle, which I will not be using of course. You can acquire a total of 10 grenades and 2 flashbangs in his segment, however, these alone will not be enough to kill the mini boss at the end. So I'll have to cheat a little and use airstrikes to finish off the big baddie at the end, while avoiding pretty much every enemy along the way. Now, all that's left to do as Chris is to rescue Mia, who is trapped in this room behind this locked door. And finally, we arrive at the moment of truth. With 42 pipe bombs and 26 mines, it was time to face Mother Miranda, the final boss of Resident Evil Village. Will this be enough to take her down? Let's find out. One more, come on, go, 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 go. <laughs> Holy shit. I almost killed myself. And with that, the final boss of the game had been conquered, and the challenge was officially over. With literally zero pipe bombs left to spare at the very end, and with an end time of 2 hours and 20 minutes, I officially beat Resident Evil Village using only pipe bombs and mines. At least, that's what I'd love to say if it wasn't for this one fucking bell at the start of the game.